how can I unsubscribe from adulthood? Big, big bag, big bag. Celebrities were a lot more likable when they didn't speak. Because once you remove people from this, you have to direct them to something which is more productive. Right. And if you don't, you've wasted your efforts. 100%. Hi, cool kids. What's good? How art thou? What's up? Welcome to our midweek special of TMS Heart Takes, aka What Is This? Raising the roof. Raising, raising the, the roof. roof. Raising <laughs> the roof. Everybody say, AKA, yep, yep. Yep, yeah. AKA, What Is This? What is going on, mate? What is actually going on? <laughs> uh, today, I want to talk about how can I unsubscribe from adulthood? That's a, Do you know what's actually funny? One of my points was, what do you miss about childhood? <laughs> <laughs> so let's the start is one. there. I don't like it here. I agree. I think as I reflect on certain burdens and responsibilities, <laughs> I would like to revert and revoke, actually, my membership um, to the adult club. Right, right, right. I yeah. don't think it's worth the subscription yeah. fee. And did, all associated Did we miss fees? like the website to be able to unsubscribe? Because you know when you're in like a yeah. membership and the unsubscribe button is really small. You know what I think it is? You know when there's always like, um, you have to tick this box <laughs> that say that you've agreed with the terms and conditions. Yep. I think it's embedded is in it? the terms and conditions. <laughs> the place we it have found ourselves. It is petite, petite. Literally. Small, minuscule. Small, minuscule. May, may even be written in invisible ink. Oh, 100%. I think it's there. And I think we ticked the box just because we wanted to get to the final submission. Gosh. Um And now we're paying the fees. So what was it or... That like, triggered was, this. Yeah. Just existence, actually. It was... <laughs> <laughs> nothing too negative you know living a blessed life we thank god yeah. um currently just in a phase of thinking about the future yeah planning my life yep thinking about you know goals oh, i feel like goals is such an adult thing goals. <laughs> goals because it's it's such a new nouveau yeah. concept yeah, 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 for yeah. adulthood mm -hmm. when we were children what were our goals we were just existing to exactly yeah no, I so it, now man. that we've entered a stage of gold <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> we're about to say tear up your vision boards close I've, your eyes i've realized that goals take things they do they take commitments they, they take money no they do it it sucks and it feels like uh, is it capitalism it, sucks. it could be the forces of darkness it, that when you say you have a goal now it's suddenly an uphill uh, battle and I am I out of breath. Swear. I swear. <laughs> Darkness goes, grr, as soon as you say, I gotta go. The warfare. And now it's just trying to make all the calculations balance. And so, yeah, I just, I just came to the, to the conclusion yeah. that as a woman with goals, yeah. maybe I shouldn't. You shouldn't. Yeah, no, just, do you know what? I hear it. Because me too, I was literally thinking today, same. amidst all sorts of things going oh, on, Jesus. amidst oh, a yeah. whole bunch yeah, of, yeah, yeah, a lot of I won't come and give too many details, but all I'm going to say is Thames water, your days are numbered. Hmm. People have been saying good luck to me, good luck to, to you. you, because we're going to fight scrap. I'm going to beat <laughs> you up, okay? Because <laughs> what you're doing is bad. Honestly. And all of the energy providers as well that are hiking up their prices, yeah. that are illegally charging people for things that they Very do not real owe. Very criminal relation, criminal, uh, behavior. Genuinely, this is like sophisticated top tier white collar crime, crime. that you guys are doing. Yeah, it's robbery. It occurred to me, having responsibilities sucks. On a grand scale. It really, really sucks. On a because big, what big do level. you mean I have to... And I know we say this on the podcast and stuff like that. Every day you have to choose to fight the good fight. And every day you have to choose to renew your mind. Every day you have to come out mm -hmm. swinging. Some days I don't want to. Exactly. Most days I don't exactly. want to. Exactly. So today was one of those days for to me. me. But too. unfortunately, it gave the devil rip. But I took just a mere morning and afternoon off <laughs> just i'm going to be honest it's like my whole house has been set on fire array disarray just because i decided to pop out for a couple of real minutes rap. to catch my breath real rap and it just made me think 
Why? <laughs> Take this. Grow up, they said. Get us out of. I want to be a grown up. Why? What a foolish plea. <laughs> what a foolish plea. I wish I could go back. And <laughs> you know what I would do? I would just tap her on the mouth. You know when like your mum will <laughs> probably just... <laughs> you... Mm, that's mm. when you got to it. Shut that dirty, <laughs> stinking mouth. Look, but I, want, I can't wait till I'm a grown up. I, 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 I just... <laughs> Just shut uh, up. Just, just shut up. Just throw away the key. Literally. And also the fact that childhood versus the span of life at which you are meant to be an adult, I think is criminal behavior. It's really not there, fair. Let us have a petition to extend childhood. childhood. When like, would you? Yeah. I think minimum 25 because mm. that's when your frontal lobe connects. Yeah, that connection. If y'all could have some like leeway bandwidth to like 30 that would be great i think 30 that would be great i think 30 my reasoning is we didn't hear about you've heard i've I've told you this about like being pastors etc like that we didn't hear about jesus and his works until he was like in his 30s Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i put it to you that maybe people shouldn't hear about us until our 30s 30s. yeah i mean that's actually all i have to say I don't have agenda points. She I said, I just the wanna... episode could end here. And that's it. I just want to say to the Grand Council of Adulthood. It's really... Revoke my membership. Wrap it. Wrap Wait, it up. I feel like that's me requesting for death. That's yeah, no, not no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, guys, I, I, no, no, I no, like life. Like being alive is great. Being responsible is not so yeah, great. It's not so great, no. And having to see the fruit and the consequences of what feel like quite trivial decisions to be made on a daily basis and having to handle them i'm tired and having to pay bills oh. and then having to go to work and then having to manage your relationships Jeez. and then having to manage your health who's even texting me and then having to like reply to texts it's a lot man and i'm tired take us out of here how did our parents even do it but that's why they were mad that's why they were angry that's why their patience was. I get it now. I understand. It's not easy. It's not, and it's not fair. Well, spare a prayer and a thought for a sister. Yeah, man. Adulthood is the height of the ghetto. I mean, it's full of nice moments. But this is the thing. Outside of those moments, the realization that there is responsibility it still. It just takes so much work. And it feels like it's in perpetuity. Like yeah. forever. Yeah. And it just gets worse. Yeah. Like there's more things I have to think about. Yeah. Why? Life. Maybe those ladies that live alone with their cat are onto something, you know? No, but I don't want that reality. This is true. And I think that's the thing. It's like... Being a goal-oriented person, Child. but also having to come to terms with the fact that your goals come with responsibilities. They do. And it's like, but how do I get it without that? Like, <laughs> where's that plan? Why do we have consequences? Do you get what I mean? Like, why hasn't someone come up with the option to get the good things without the bad things or the heavy things? But those are the people that end up in jail. Maybe they're onto something. <laughs> <laughs> The ones that end up in jail. <laughs> well. Maybe they are onto something. Oh, well. Sisters, how are you? Yeah, how are you guys doing? Let us know. We actually want to know, like, how, you know, give us an update. Yeah, how is, is adulting, adulthood going? Yeah, is adulthood, like, is it treating you guys well? Because we're us over here. Interesting things, interesting things. Well, I have two things on the agenda, yeah, the aside from that. The first is the Digiteam, a.k.a. the Digital Gear Team. Okay. And how people are divesting from celebrity culture, mm. divesting from celebrity idolization, mm-hmm. and actually blocking celebrities yeah, to yeah, try yeah. and uh, effectively behead them yeah. for, and all that jazz. Um, so that's on my agenda. Mm. And then the, <laughs> the second nice one, one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> big bag activity. Mm. So I'm sure you've come across the big bag, big bag. And a lot of people have been talking about the most big bag thing that they have done. Mm. so have that percolated in your mind in my mind the mm. most big back activity thing that you've done <laughs> mm-hmm. and then i have a dilemma mm. okay. but first let's talk about the digital gear team yeah 
So this was inspired by a creator called Khadija Mbawi. I hope I'm saying their name correctly. Mm. But they were basically talking about, obviously, the Met Gala happened and the fanciful festival, like just the excess that Mm -hmm. celebrity culture can sometimes represent. Um, And they were just, especially on like TikTok, Instagram, all social media platforms, you have this weird justification juxtaposition of celebrities in these these quite garish and expensive outfits with obviously the things that are going on in In Gaza right now in Congo in Sudan and all this kind of stuff and you know in the Hunger Games where you have like the capital and all of the districts people are basically saying well celebrities and those that are super wealthy are currently living in the capital whilst the rest of us are living in various versions of the districts and how far we have fallen. Mm -hmm. So there's been a movement right now on social media called Digiteam, Mm. which is basically cutting off celebrities and basically not feeding into this idea or feeding into what is essentially making them famous, especially because it's continuing to widen the gap between the rich and And the the poor. Yeah. What's yeah, yeah. your thoughts on cutting off celebrities? I mean, even celebrities like I think it was like Kim Kardashian who lost like three million followers mm. in I don't know how many hours, but it mm. was like record breaking. You've got a couple of people. There was a TikToker slash influencer called Haley something. I can't remember her last name, but she basically went to the Met Gala and when she was asked about like obviously the things that are going on in the world, you yeah. see, she said to quote Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake interesting i'm sure she meant that as like banter but yeah, unfortunately with the current context and reality of global strife yeah very stupid it thing to didn't say didn't land very well yeah yeah so cutting off celebrities yeah i think it's it's not new yeah, at hello. all it's just another means to do it um i think what we're just seeing is people rebelling against the social hierarchy yeah and it is very frustrating for anyone to see those who sit at the top of that hierarchy getting to live almost in their own bubble from the rest of the world and you can say that about any um about most privileged people about most people who sit towards the top of that hierarchy Mm -hmm, if we're looking mm -hmm. at the globe if we're looking at social class um if we're looking at global economies literally anyone could say anything about anyone on top Mm. of them no matter what part of the strat what um part of the stratification you sit within so i think what we need to be mindful of is what it seems like a lot of people are realizing anyway yep. which is there are so many different ways to feed into that hierarchy from Yes, there's like the monarchy, there's Mm -hmm, the governments, mm -hmm. there are the aristocrats, there are the people you can easily point to and be like, that's the bourgeoisie, you know, not to sound super like, you know, Marxist or communist, but like there are easy targets for that. But then there is also in this new celebrity culture, other people that sit at the top in different ways, whether it be because they hold social influence or at least the social capital we now recognize as followers Mm. or platform, you know? It's not new at all. I think what we're seeing is people to some degree lashing out at the wrong thing Mm. because I, with celebrities at the scale of like Kim Kardashian or even this like um, Hayley, you said her name, Um, like influencers like that who go to somewhere like the Met Gala, which does represent a certain level of opulence and just garishness and like abundance which is almost obscene Mm -hmm. um i think it's easy to look at people like that and be like i'm gonna unfollow you but what does that do that doesn't necessarily change make the change that you want to see so like for example let them eat cake it doesn't necessarily hold her accountable to getting educated on the Mm. situation with gaza or in sudan or wherever you know the world tragedies that are occurring i feel like as a society we need to do better as to how we can do more to demand more of people at 
the top, right? Yep, yep. And how to actually enforce that kind of accountability. And I do get why you would go to like unfollowing people because it's basically like hit them where it hurts, hit them in their pocket. Absolutely. But I also think there needs to be a way to kind of follow up with those things far more than just an apology, far more than just the the shame and the sadness of, oh, you lost three millions and that's, you know, yeah. that's a great, you know, newspaper title or an article title for someone. But does that actually bring around the change that we want to see? Does that actually mean that they're going to use their platform to shed light on something good yeah. it does that mean they're going to use their influence even to shed light on something good um but i also think sometimes social media has these kind of outrages and it just doesn't last long yeah that's the thing and i don't it? yeah and i don't mean to sound pessimistic but it's kind of like okay you've unfollowed this person but you're probably following someone else yeah. who perpetrate something very similar like if you're going to diverse divest from celebrity culture you have to do it entirely yeah and it's actually very difficult to in a society which is almost structured that way like to what degree do you stop supporting certain platforms of entertainment mm -hmm. and just certain platforms in general which enable people even if you're not directly invested in their content yeah. if you're invest invested in a platform you're still supporting someone even if you don't want to support them exactly so it's really hard and i think we have to and, and, and i don't think boy Cutting is bad. Yeah. I don't think um I think I actually think it's good. Very good. Very, very good method of protesting. But I think you have to come you have to realize that boycotting something requires mm. you to really lose and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we make enough sacrifice for our boycotting to actually be significant. Mm. You unfollowing someone is not a boycott. Mm. You leaving Instagram is a boycott. Or like completely and getting rid of your affiliation with Meta. Right, is a, do you right, get what I right. mean? Like that's a boycott, right? But people are like, that's just too far extreme. But mm. then I think to like the the bus boycotts during the civil rights movement. And yep. it's just kind of like almost, it's funny because this morning I was reading the book of Esther, but that kind yep. of, if I perish, I perish mindset. Yeah, I think a lot of us don't have that kind of mindset because it requires so much sacrifice. And I'm talking to, uh, including myself. Mm. I'm not just pointing fingers like it requires so much sacrifice, which a lot of us are not actually willing to give, um, which is, again, understandable. But at the same time, it just requires us to sit down and think, okay, so what is the change that I actually want to see? Mm. What is my contribution to it? Yes, hitting somebody where it hurts may be the beginning, but it requires you to continue going on. This is it. Um, and you don't just cut off people's heads to punish them you cut off their heads to send a message to the people mm. what message does this send to people i don't think i think it could encourage performative activism in that people are not actually bringing about global change or impact from a place of genuine care but from a place of fear and a desire to just cover up their own backs mm. and so that kind of leads people to not make real sustaining change yeah. but actually just do things which they think look it's virtue signaling right mm. things which they think look virtuous but I think if we can band together as a people to actually demand change, action change, but also hold people accountable to make real change. Yeah. Then these things will actually hold more weight than we, we they, they do currently for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear that. It's all about going the distance, really. Because I definitely, even in the video that Khadija shared, they highlighted how obviously we've got the celebrities but they really are the face or exactly. rather the tip of the iceberg exactly. right so to what extent do we really want to confront how much we have to lose or how much we have actually invested in what is inherently a violent and capitalist system mm -hmm. right because when we think about celebrities not only are they people but they're also products yeah. and they're products that we use we consume and i get that the initial reality or reaction or action that you would want to take really is to oh i don't really want to consume this product anymore the thing is it's not even just the product but it's actually the system because when a product or a line is no longer hitting with consumers what do the producers do they produce yeah. other products that will hit and they will speak to the needs of the consumers yeah. i think about other products that we use like we've spoken about this phones technologies are we holding people accountable to ethically sourced materials for tech goods that we use mm -hmm. every single day we talk about things like fast fashion and how there is now an elitism coming about you know you need to invest in haute couture and mm. really expensive fashion or something that's a cut above the rest but which is just fast fashion it's just oftentimes. fast exactly and they're even making more money than the folks that are even being a little bit more honest in mm. their pricing as to in reference to um, the production cost so it really is about 
how far are you willing to go with this? If you are divesting from this, then to what extent are you going to take that same ideology to other areas of your life? And I do love the unity that it has produced across social media and that people are actually, I think more so than like past generations because of the empowerment of the internet, more people are actually saying there's actually something wrong with this. Yeah. And I think there's something quite powerful about the power that the internet has given to people to be able to say that whereas a couple like decades ago celebrities were literally being power packaged mm. and they were basically being launched at our faces but we also didn't necessarily have the platforms or the power to speak back and say mm. actually uh, i'm not really interested in this kind of product and when i think about how much like for example the, the media has become so decentralized mm -hmm. there's actually opportunities for individuals nowadays across the spectrum to actually have a platform Absolutely. and i think about the issues that are going on right now now it's very, very hard for people to fake yeah. ignorance yeah. or fake that, you know, they didn't hear about this. Whereas a couple of decades ago, maybe they could have. Yeah. So I like the fact that it's really highlighting, actually, there is a problem and you can't ignore this problem because yeah. there's far too much, like there's actually far too much information on the internet. Yeah. There's far too much information in our communities for us to ignore this. So I think that's good, but I definitely agree in that. We need to come heavy, man. We, we have need to, to come heavy. We have to have that internet is an amazing avenue for education but it's what do we empower people to do with that knowledge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i think it's everyone knowing they have individual power in who they follow who they support who they empower even financially with right. their viewership and allowing people to also know how to take that forward to actually change the world as well which is something which i think a lot of us are still figuring out because the internet is so new mm. um but even with that I hope that people who are currently being vocal about these issues and who are pushing people to do these things like boycott, unfollow, whatever, are also in themselves thinking about, well, what's the next step? Because mm. once you remove people from this, you have to direct them to something which is more productive. Right. And if you don't, you've wasted your efforts. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. And at the end of the day, it's about people, man. Like yeah. the people that are suffering. I know it's even kind of tough now because we're also looking at humanitarian aid systems yeah. and institutions with a little bit more scrutiny exactly. so people are a lot more paranoid about where their money and where their financing and their support is going to but at least we're actually starting to have the conversation about that because back in the day we didn't even like it was only what was it red nose day and all those kind of charitable mm. very specifically um identified charitable causes that people were supporting mm. and now i do like that we have this almost antennae satellites understanding of the fact that there are so many causes that we can mm. collectively come together to support yeah um, but i do think the advantage of what people back in the day kind of had was the i guess the touch point to be able to like lobby or raise this issue up with the local government mm -hmm. i think because young people in particular have become less engaged with government and kind of taking up their own personal activism mm -hmm. um we aren't seeing as much, we may be seeing culture shift, but we aren't necessarily seeing policy shift mm -hmm. and we aren't necessarily seeing nations really engage in what the young people or what people actually want them to be engaged with. So I also would love to see a bridging of the two though, because mm. I think online activism is so important. And oftentimes it is the rallying of such big numbers that cause people to even feel provoked to do any change in, um, or at least look at, a certain issue mm. which yeah so it has its benefits but i do think there needs to be a bridging of people engaging with mps or it's, well in the uk it's mps but in the states it could be like your local i don't know governor senator whatever um mayors stuff like that to really bring about some kind of big change because someone like kim kardashian can only do so much within her jurisdiction she's actually just she, and, and it's a powerful thing to be able to change people's minds mm -hmm. and people's thinking about stuff but the people who can actually change things I mean, on these kind of levels to be fair though mm -hmm. kim k has actually been quite pivotal in like changing policy in america like bit. so with her like prison reform and yeah. like getting folks out of, like i do f hear it that there are celebrities that do actually have the power to start those conversations. Mm -hmm. So with her actually engaging with Donald Trump, with yeah. her actually engaging no, that's what in I'm that saying. prison reform. But she has to go to the governments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So these people can change culture and cause people to pay attention to certain stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think young people in particular need to also know how to engage with political systems and those people who 
are closer to government or in our case like parliament mm. which is your local government yeah you know yeah but and also i I mean it also on a global stage yeah kim k can affect america mm. that's america which is important yeah. but if you're in the uk i'm following kim k what she do want to do she's not british that's what i mean this is true this is true it is very interesting though because even when i think of someone like taylor swift for example yeah and how I think they were having a conversation about how much influence these people have, right? Yeah. And how she, like Taylor Swift, ostensibly could impact voter registration. Absolutely. I think she put out like a tweet or something like that, and the amount it literally skyrocketed yeah. in terms of how many people were like voting or yeah. registering to vote. And I think it's quite bleak. It's important for like young people to be involved in the apparatus of like policy. Mm-hmm. But I think what's also quite bleak is the fact that our first port of call is celebrities. To, to lobby celebrities, yeah. right? And I, I do understand that some people are a little bit desensitized, but also disillusioned mm-hmm. in how much power they have as an individual, which is why the collective mindset is so important, yeah. right? It's how yeah. do I, how do I as a person, but also within the collective, actually start to lobby. And I think I yeah. I definitely agree that we've lost that power now. We're currently hoping for these celebrities on a world stage to do that work for us yeah. as opposed to coming together. So it's a shame that what was once collective lobbying has now become pressurizing these hot flashes of celebrities yeah. to do that work for us. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what I'm highlighting. Like uh, there needs to be a bit of a balance or a bridging of the two because... Yes, celebrities are important and I understand more than anything that like they are the ones who have the ear of the culture right now. But there also needs to be that understanding that like it also requires you to really do a lot as well if you can in your local environment. And it's not like we're in systems where you cannot speak to a politician or speak to a parliamentarian or whatever to bring around that kind of change so yeah i just mean it's like a holistic system and i think sometimes people see that oh i've unfollowed kim k as their activism it It doesn't end there if you really want something to shift and move you gotta do something Mm. something else as well something that will cost you as well yeah that's exactly it something that will actually cost you because I think celebrities and the way celebrity culture works is they can also do something very easily to just make up for that. That doesn't actually age your cause. All they're going to do is kind of damage, unless they already have their own heartfelt compassion Mm. towards the situation. They don't have to do anything that addresses the situation in Gaza or Congo or Libya. Like it doesn't matter Mm. to them. What they need to do is recover their own personal brand and their public relations. Do you get what I mean? And so that could look like speaking up against these issues, but it also could look like something else, Mm. which completely derails your own course. It was really funny because in the video as well, um, Khadija had mentioned like celebrities were a lot more likable when they didn't speak. And it was just their like publicists or whatnot that was basically coordinating a lot of their public appearances and their quotables. And there was a mystique about celebrities. But I also think that's because a lot of celebrities back then were less so influencers and more so traditional celebrities. Exactly. In that like you're an actor or like you had a trade that that. that rose you to celebrity status. And so, yes, we do see you on a red carpet from time to time, but we're waiting for your next film or we're waiting for your next album. But now it's like, what else do you do but just talk on the internet? And sometimes it's actually okay to not. Yeah. Maybe it's we need to bring back the traditional celebrities yeah. where, you know, there was a bit of mystique about them. Yeah. We were just really engrossed in their work and their art and whatnot and the mysteriousness of that because... Do you yeah. think we would ever go back to that? No. I don't think we will. No. I think as humans, we are too intrigued it's actually humans that make things bad this is the problem we're too intrigued and we also are too prone to idolizing yeah there we go Mm -hmm. that it will inevitably wind down to this it will always descend to this um because we always want more we always want more we always want more insight we always want to it's all right let these people be free too nosy get your nose out of people's businesses. businesses yeah yeah it's quite a it's quite a challenging thing to see. It's quite bleak, man. Yeah. But yeah, I've recently put out a question box on my Instagram um, because I'm recording a Q&A for YouTube. Mm. And somebody did say like, oh, why haven't you spoken about Gaza? And I found it interesting because one, I actually have maybe mm. that day mm-hmm. on my story, you missed mm-hmm. it. But also <laughs> um, I think that what people want to see is an activism which they purely agree with. Right. And then I thought to myself like, 
you also don't know what people are doing to engage politically behind the scenes right, because right. anyway i don't need to come onto a podcast to publicly justify my opinions there you go. but i think it's important to like just remember that life is so much more than an Instagram story. Exactly. And also political activism or at least being engaged in politics and the <laughs> international relations mm. is actually so much bigger than just someone saying something on their story. Right. Not to say that they can't and not to say that that isn't a great start um, or a great thing to do mm. in general. But I think that we become so obsessed on these things and perceiving it in a way that we think is socially acceptable that we forget that that's not the only way to engage. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think the complexity of that, I think can never really be captured At by- all what is ostensibly these snapshots of platforms that we have, right?